No, forking is something else. Oh, yeah. Um, I know that's how I got that, uh, that animated gift page of theirs with a the little kitty slash squid. Well, well that yeah. forking is something else. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, here's what we're going to do today. Today we're going to talk about, our focus is going to be on using um, PhoneGap to build, to take an HTML uh, application, if you will, HTML5 application, and create a native mobile application for it. Before we do that, I think it's good to, to cover a few terms and to cover some, uh, some of the tools that we'll be using. All right. First of all, we're going to have our web pages in a folder on our machine. And that will contain my, all my HTML pages and related files. This is going to be on my machine. There's two things that are going to be out on the cloud. There's going to be something called GitHub and something called PhoneGap, specifically build PhoneGap. GitHub is a tool for um, version management or revision management of software, specifically open source software projects. Um, open source software projects are projects where, just as name implies, you uh, anyone has access to the source code, which means that anyone can take it and make modifications to it. All right, that's what Linux is. That's what the Apache web server is. That's what um, um, Open Office is. That's what the GIMP is. All these are open uh, source applications, which means that. Really, I mean, it's essentially a mob working on these things, right? And it's amazing how that works out. I mean, it's one of those things that you would think ought to be a mess, but actually works out to create some great software. Well, as you might imagine, if you have a mob working on software, you know, sometimes if you have two people working on the same thing, they'll get in each other's way. You know, the old cliche, too many cooks spoil the broth and all that. So... There has to be a way to keep track of like who's doing what on what. So revision uh, control and version control and revision management software allows you to do that. And it, it does it by doing a process called checking in and checking out. Whereas you essentially say, hey, I'm going to work on this. So no one else can work on it. All right. Then you check it in and someone else can take it and make enhancements to it. All right. That's what an open source project is. Now, you had mentioned about a fork uh, in, in an application. What a fork is, is a fork is where you take a version and it goes two different directions. In other words, I may have a, I may have a, a HTML5 casino game, all right? And I build it to play blackjack, all right? And someone might take it and develop, take my blackjack program and add a component for poker, let's say. And someone else may take and fork that, which means they're going to go in a different direction, all right, fork in the road. So where there was one open source project, my blackjack program, someone takes it and makes it a blackjack and poker program, someone takes it and makes it a blackjack and roulette program, all right. Forking can be bad for an open source project because of that very reason, is it sort of dilutes and uh, you then have, you know, what ha now you essentially have two versions of it. What happens if someone makes an enhancement over here that you would have liked in that over there? So you try to keep forking to a minimal, all right, uh, to do that. Really, all the different uh, distributions of Linux could be said to be a fork from the original Linux, where people take it and head off in a different direction with different goals or, or, or whatever. All right, so this is a revision.
decision management tool. Now, we're probably going to be the only people working on our stuff, right? Because we're not doing anything earth shattering. So the revision management part of it, that's kind of less of an issue for us. But I think it is important because when you do this, you see that terminology. All right. So this has repositories out there. All right. And repositories are places where you put stuff, places where you put your files and your code and whatever. And it could be any kind of code. In our case, it's going to be HTML5 code. All right. But it could be Android code. It could be iPhone code. It could be any kind of code. All right. GitHub works. You know, you're not, people don't just use it with PhoneGap. These two talk to each other. But it's not as though you have to use them both together, right? You can use GitHub for any kind of open source project, not just the ones that you're building through, through uh, build phone gap. So you have these repositories. And GitHub is a way to manage those repositories out in the cloud and check in and check out and all that sort of good stuff. Now, for you to create and make repositories to upload there, you have to download to your local machine GitHub application. And again, you were talking about doing it in the command line. There's also GUI that you can download. I just downloaded Git Bash. Well, it's not the wrong one, per se, but it's not the easy one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're going to download a GUI. And what that will do is that will allow us to easily connect to these repositories and sync them up. So, what we're, first thing we're going to do is we're going to download GitHub GUI on my machine, this machine in here. And you'll need to do this in lab. Now, I don't expect you to, like, have a photographic memory and remember everything I'm saying, right? I want to introduce you to this stuff so you kind of have an idea of what to expect. But I imagine it's going to require some assistance when we get in the lab. So don't think that, like, oh, I'm on my own. I have to do it all myself, you know? In fact, I'm not exactly sure what we're doing next week, but I do plan on having some of the time devoted to being lab time to polish up some of these things and so on. So I'll have to look at the schedule and decide that. So anyhow, we're going to download GitHub. We're going to take these local folders, and we're going to make our local repositories. So we make our local repositories so we can make all our changes on our machine. We can test it out. We can do everything we need, and when we're done, we publish our repository. Let's call our repository LCCC map. We can publish it up on, up in the cloud, in GitHub, and that repository's up there. All right? Now, imagine if this was an ongoing project. If this was an ongoing project, what you would do is you would check out the code, you'd check out this repository. Let's say we were enhancing it, going for LC Map 2.0, right? You know, six months from now. I would check out that code to my local repository through GitHub, provided no one else had checked it out. I'd make my changes to it, and then I'd publish it again. Now, we don't need to take it that far. We just need to create a local repository, put our HTML5 code in here, and publish it up to the cloud. It does need to be HTML5, all right? I'm sorry, HTML as opposed to PHP. Not necessarily, you could get away with, I'm sure, with earlier versions of HTML. But uh, you couldn't put a PHP file out there. So if you do have that, for this assignment, you'll need to, you'll need to convert it. I don't believe you can. What you could, you can make AJAX calls from an HTML file to a PHP file, so you could do it that way. All right, but I don't. I, you know, I believe it would have to be is looking for like an index.html file. All right, because your little Android device doesn't have a server to serve the PHP pages. All right. So, so what have we done so far? We have downloaded GitHub. We've created our repository and we've published it. Now we're ready to go in the phone gap. And in phone gap, what we do is we create our app. We say, I want to create an app. That's on the website you say create an app? Yeah. What's our app called? LCCC map. What's the repository for it? I put in my GitHub 
repository name. I click a button and I generate an APK file, among other files. Since we're sort of Android based here, that's the one we're interested in because this is the Android uh, install. Is that the regular phone gap or phone gap build? This is phone gap build. Oh. Yeah. All right. So, all in all, it's pretty simple. You need accounts both on PhoneGap and on GitHub. You can get free accounts on both of them. GitHub, with a free account, you can only create public repositories. So your code is open source. If you really had something proprietary, if you had really a great million dollar idea, then pay whatever the fee is to get a, a, an account that would allow you to have private repositories. But for the examples we're doing in this class, you know, put it, you know, you'll create a public repository. You can only create public repositories in GitHub. In Build Phone Gap, you can have one private application and unlimited open source applications. Now, I'm not going to worry about private since this is open source kind of by definition because of GitHub. With an open source application, it has to be tied to a GitHub repository. So you say where to find the code to build the application. Okay, so here's the players in this game. All right, two websites, an account on both of them. All right, and then a program that we install on our local machine. All right, called GitHub that allows us to talk to this guy. So what you need to do if you were doing this is you need to create an account on each of these, download GitHub, put your HTML5 code in a file, and then you're ready to go. All right, so I'm going to go do that now. I did install the Chrome browser because I, I, that's the browser I like, and the GitHub page was up I was running it in the old browsers that we have here on campus. So I installed the Chrome browser. So let's go. I've already set up my accounts on those two sites. So I'm going to go. I'm going to log into GitHub. <laughs> what is a Git, by the way? What is a Git? A Git is British slang for like a dumb person or a jerk. All right. Linus Torvald, the guy who created Linux, said he named both of his major things after himself in a little bit of self-deprecating humor. He said Linux was named after Isley because his name is Linus, and uh, GitHub is because he's a Git, you know. So a little bit of computer humor, very little bit. All right, so I'm going to log in. Here's my username and password. All right. You'll notice here's all the repositories that I've created earlier. All right. I'm going to go and, if I remember right, yeah, GitHub for Windows. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to download it. Downloading my EXE. I'm going to run it. This will take a few minutes to execute and all that. I think. I'm kind of annoyed because I have an old version of the Mac OS and I can't run GitHub on it because I'm like running OS 10.58, I think. I never did upgrade it. All right, run. It's going to do its thing. It's going to think about it. It's going to install. Hopefully, it will only take a couple minutes. yesterday in Android class. Did you? Yes. So the video is out there. I was debating showing the video. Yeah, I looked. The video yeah. was in our place today. So. 
Yeah, I posted it this morning, I think. But I debated just showing the video in class today, but I thought, nah, we'll, we'll do it live instead of maybe some tape background vocals. Procedure, though? Yes. I think in the discussion yesterday, I gave a little bit of an intro to this, like why we're doing it, you know, what the point of it is and all that, similar to what I did Monday in here. Yeah. But between, between today and Monday, covered everything that I talked about in that video. Probably did a better job of it today because this is my second time through. So, all right. Okay. So we're installing it. And if we look, here we go, we have GitHub, and we have Git shell. The shell is a command prompt where you can do some things. You can actually just get into the, get into the command line and run the exact commands that you want to do. We're not going to do that. We're going to use the GUI. All right? And in the GUI, what I have to do, remember, I logged in to the website. This is the application running on my local machine, so I have to log in here too. So fortunately, it's the same ID and password. So I'll go and log in. It's going to ask me, there I am, it's really me. And I'll put in All right, so I don't have any local repositories, right, because this is the first time I've installed it on this machine. Those other repositories that you saw when we look at the website, those are ones that I created on other machines, like when I did the, the lecture yesterday, when I played around in lab, and so on. So we don't have any local repositories, so that's what we're going to do now. We're going to create one. And what's a local repository? Well, it's just a file that we have our code in. So here is... Here is my little map program, the, the, the sort of proof of concept that I did to show LC's map. HTML5 page, we can click on and see a couple of the buildings. All right. So I'm going to put that in a folder called LCCC map. And it's on the desktop. I'm going to go to here, and I'm going to create. I have my local repository. I'm now going to tell GitHub to treat this like a GitHub repository. So I'm going to go and I'm going to drag over that folder right on here. I guess I could click to create one, but I'm going to drag it over here and drop it. I get some chance. I get a chance to give a name of it and. And I, I definitely want to push it to GitHub, right? I can't keep it private because, again, I don't have a paid account. All right. The name, LCC map, the description, the path to it. I can click Create. And when I click Create, I get this thing saying that here's my repository. Well, I can go into that repository and look. And notice that now there's three files in here. All right. There is the index.html, and then there's two other files that GitHub is going to use in doing the version control and that sort of thing. So we don't really need to worry about those. All right. Right now, what is the state? The state is, if I go out to GitHub on the web, you will see that repository out there. But there's nothing in it because I haven't published it yet. When I created it locally, that created the repository, but I haven't published it, so there's no files out there. I can't really do anything with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to commit my changes. 
put a commit co put a commit message and I'll say this is the initial build if I can type I could put a description and I say commit all right this is what gets me every single time you also have to click publish all right um, to, to, to do that so I'll click publish and what that will do is that will take my code and copy it up to that repository in the cloud. So the act of publishing goes and says, okay, I want to take all that and publish that up to the cloud. So now here's my repository and it shows those three files in it. If I had looked at that a minute ago, it wouldn't have shown any of those files. I, I should have clicked on it to do that, but I forgot. But if I had done that a minute ago, it wouldn't have shown those files. So now, that repository is out there. All right? It's also on my local, right? And if I wanted to go and do some more changes, I'd have to go and, and request that code, check it, you know, to, to pull the requ request to pull the code. All right? And then go from there. This also allows you to manage things like issues and create a little wiki and, and, and all that for your open source app. So, you know, people use it for, for a lot of things. Nice little organizational hub for open source uh, software uh, projects. You can watch projects, like if there was an open source project out here that you liked, an application, you can watch it so that you get updates like when there were new revisions to it and so on. All right. And a fork is where you would go and you'd say, okay, I want to kind of take this and I want to base a new project off of this guy. Yes? How would you, um, back in the GUI, how would you add files? Like, that you already made a repository. Can you add files to that repository or you have to make it a new every time? Um, you should be able to. Uh, you'd, I, I believe what you'd have to do is first pull it. All right, pull the, the files, pull the repository. Because if, as you're adding files, you don't want other people to be like making other changes to it. So you'd have to essentially check out the files from the repository, then you make whatever changes you want to your local machine, commit them, and then republish it. And that should take care of it. All right. So now we have our files in that GitHub repository. We're all set to build. This will be the easiest thing you do today this part of it, this piece of it. I can almost guarantee that. I'm going to go to build dot phone gap if you remember my initial diagram, we've done our local, our thing on our local machine. We've posted up to that repository. Now we're doing that thing down there where we're going to build the APK. So I'm going to go sign in you can sign in either through an Adobe account or through GitHub. Uh, apparently, PhoneGap was recently acquired by uh, Adobe, which is probably a good thing. All right. Um, let me see if I remember my account for this. I believe I do. Sign in. All right. I can now create a new app. All right. So I click create to create a new app. It's going to be open source. So it might be a little hard to tell. I could switch between open source and private. If it's private, I can just upload a zip file. If it is open source, it has to be from a public uh, GitHub repository. So remember, with PhoneGap, you get the one that you can make private. With GitHub, you get zero that you can make private, with a, that is with a free account. I could, however, for my private, like if I had some real proprietary code, I could upload a zip file with that. All right, but we're going to do this all open source, mine as well. I get to pick the repository I want. So I go there. That's the repository, LCC map. I pick it. It's going to do its thing. It's grabbing stuff from it. Alright. 
And now, what am I missing? Oh, there we go. It must have been a timing uh, problem. Now I got this blue button that says ready to build. Probably took a second for that to appear and I was getting impatient. So I clicked the build button. Maybe it was actually building it the first time through. I don't know. You can see there it is building five things. iOS it gave up on. I'm not sure why. You probably need some sort of uh, signing certificate with iOS that I don't have or whatever. Um, you can see it's building the little Android guy. Next to that, it's building the Windows Phone app. iOS, I don't know. It didn't work. I don't know. I'm not in a position to troubleshoot that, so I've been ignoring that. Android is successfully built. Windows Phone is successfully built. BlackBerry, I'm pretty sure that's what that is. It, it is working on. HP, it built. And I don't know what the I is. You know what the I is? No. Nope. Yep, me either. All right. Five out of six, it built. Now I'm ready to download and install it. All right. I can go and install this a couple different ways. I can click publish page and then I can go and I could download that APK. All right. The APK file is the install file. Or, and this kind of stuff is awesome. I can do better than that. I can take my device that has a QR reader. And just point it at that symbol on the screen. So nothing up my sleeves. I'm going into my phone's QR reader. You're all familiar with this, right? It looks at these kinds of things and does something with it, like maybe browse to a web page or whatever. Click scan. All right. Figured it out. Figured out what it was. It's downloading the build that I just built. And if I go then to downloads on my phone, here is, right up here, 5.50 p.m., ML Zeller's LCC map debug.apk. I can, boom, click on that. Do I want to install it? Sure, I want to install it. Does its thing. Application installed. Let me open it. And here is the Android app version of my little HTML5 page that I had. Let's take a second to fire up. There's the college buttons. And there's the map. There's the business division. There's the college center. Not sure why it does not have my identification. Uh, the, the, the little pointer that says where I am. Sometimes this GPS acts a little funky. But at any rate, here it is as a native Android application. So I didn't write any Android code. All I did was run it through the phone gap and it created, oh, Symbian, that's what that one was. All right. It created those different, um, those different, um, versions of the application. You can only do this with one like, language is on like JavaScript, HTML, CSS. You can throw like an APK in there and transfer it to the other phone. Correct. Correct. That would be cool. It would be cool if you could.